We're looking at the Anime Gun V2 repo from Tachibana Yoshino today. Here's what the method looks like in practice. This repository uses a styled generative adversarial network. It has an interesting mixture of features from style transfer, but ultimately this is a generator network. We will not cover the details of a generative adversarial network in this video, but we will take a look through this repo and essentially try to recreate the effects we saw during the intro. There are a few things to highlight in the requirements. We will be using the GPU version of TensorFlow. It's important to point out that we will be using TensorFlow version 1 as compared to TensorFlow version 2, which is the most recent release. Other than that, the most notable library will be OpenCV. Taking a look at the usage section, we can see that we can infer both images and video. The author has already provided some examples which show both the input and the output. These are impressive results, so we're going to try and see if we can replicate them. Of course, not everyone has a GPU, so we'll do this with Colab. Just search Colab, and then follow the Google Colab link. The only thing you need to get started is an active Google account. So let's create a new notebook and then split up the screen here a little bit. The first thing we'll do in the notebook is change the runtime. We definitely want to ensure we are using the GPU accelerations, so we'll change the runtime type to GPU. We now want to check to make sure we have the GPU enabled. To do this, we are going to use a bash command. In Colab, if we place an exclamation point in front of a line, then it's interpreted as a bash command. We'll use the command NVIDIA SMI to check the GPU details. We can see that Colab is using CUDA version 10.1, which is exactly what we needed. We have a Tesla P100 with 16 gigs of memory, which will be more than enough for our purpose. And as mentioned, we will be using TensorFlow version 1. In Colab, we can simply set the TensorFlow version directly using a command like this. If it's successful, we should see this TensorFlow 1.x selected response. The next thing we want to do is check to make sure that TensorFlow really was set to the correct version. Here we can see we have TensorFlow 1.15.2, which is not the exact version that the author recommends, but it's only a minor release difference. Colab comes with a number of libraries pre-installed. So fortunately, we should already have the rest of the requirements. We want to take a look at the test script and make sure that we understand it. When looking through a script like this, the first thing to understand is the main entry point. In a Python script, that will be if name equals main. The script looks relatively simple. Command line arguments are read in using this parse args function and then we run this test function passing it these arguments. At the top here we can look through some of the arguments. If we want to understand how an argument is used, then we can trace it through the script. For instance, we can explore the argument style name. The argument is first passed to the test function after being taken out of parse args. 
we can now see that style name is in the signature of the test function. But if we search for style name, we can see that it's only used in one other place, and that is to build the name of the results directory. The first thing the test function does is to set up the results directory. And this section right here is where we set up the generator. Once we're within the context of the session, we load in each checkpoint and then run inference with the run method of the session object. It's important to point out here that this is the TensorFlow version 1 syntax. This process has been changed in version 2. It can be very helpful to first read through the tests that have been written for a library. The tests often work as basic examples that will help you understand how to work with the code. To get started, we'll first clone the repository. We'll need to copy the URL and then use it to call git clone to bring the repo into our Colab environment. One of the nice features of Colab is you can view the directory structure. We can see the animegon v2 directory. We'll want to use this as our working directory. Here, instead of using a bash command, we'll use a Jupyter magic command. The cd command will allow us to change our current working directory to the animegon v2 directory. And we can confirm the change by using the bash command pwd, which is print working directory. The next thing we'll do is download some images into our working directory so that we have something to run our GAN against. We'll be pulling our images from the FastAI dataset. We'll provide the link below. We'll be using the smallest version of the COCO dataset, which will be the evaluation images. We take the URL for the dataset and then download it into our Colab environment using the bash command wget. We can then extract the file using the bash command unzip. We can just type val and then allow Jupyter to complete the name of the file. It looks like it's done, so if we refresh our directory view, we can see the new evaluation directory. If we try to open this directory, it will take a little time because there are a lot of images inside. We can look through a few examples to see what kind of images we have. We'll refer to the inference instructions provided by the repo. We'll copy this code and paste it directly into our notebook. One important thing to note is that we want to run this command using Python 3 while using Colab, and we will run this as a bash command even though the Jupyter Notebook is already running a Python kernel. We'll format this command a little better for clarity. This checkpoint dir argument is referencing this checkpoint directory over here. Feel free to experiment with different weights by adjusting the value of this parameter. The test dir parameter points to the location where we'll be loading the images, so we'll update ours to refer to the VAL 2017 directory we set up. We discovered earlier that the style name will be used to name the results directory, so we will change ours to simply coco. We'll now execute the command. This will attempt to run the test script we looked at earlier. Depending on how many images you're inferring, this may take a while. We're running this on 5,000 images, but we can already look at some of the results by opening the COCO directory. So cool, we've demonstrated the image inference here but there's also another command for producing videos. There's obviously a lot of room for exploration and refinement when it comes to this technique, so go ahead and clone this repository for yourself and try it out on a video.
then start to think about where you can take this technique next.